Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm Max, that is Spec Guide, and in this video I wanna to talk to you about EV efficiency because it's something that I think we frequently misunderstand as EV drivers or as new EV drivers. You might see numbers thrown around that you don't even understand, units you don't get. That's what I'm here to help with. Like, what is MPGE? right? I think we all as drivers might know what miles per gallon is in a gas car, but the EPA has this MPGE metric. And then there's kilowatt hours and watt hours to discuss. So if you're not a nerd and this is all alien speak to you, uh, then please keep watching this video and share it with others who can benefit because we got a lot of nerdy stuff to get into. So let's talk about it. So the basics here to understand are, well, let's start with miles per gallon. We all get that in a gas car. It's a measure of efficiency. It has its flaws, but it's what a lot of us well, in the US depend on. And the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, rates electric cars by this metric called MPGE, which stands for miles per gallon equivalent. And you might ask, what does that mean, right? Because like, how do they equivalent that? It's actually fairly easy when I looked into it. I, I didn't know myself, even though I talk about electric cars all the time. So I looked it up. Um, whoops, almost went the wrong way there. Uh, apologies, I'm just having you in the car with me while I'm driving. So I looked it up and I was really surprised that uh, it's actually so simple. So a gallon of gasoline is, if you think about it, a quantity of energy. And all we really need to do to convert that into electric understandable energy is convert it into a unit that people like to use for energy, commonly in electrical applications, but it's energy in general. It's called a watt. And if you have a lot of watts, you have a kilowatt. A kilowatt, if you remember science class or physics or uh, you know, know your uh, units, basically kilo is a thousand. So a kilowatt is a thousand watts. And then that's like a continuous measure of energy. So like I could be using my motors in my electric car at 30 kilowatts, that's continuous. How do I measure stored energy? Well, let's assume I was drawing 30 uh, kilowatts for one hour. That would be 30 kilowatt hours. And kilowatt hours are the unit that we like to use for measuring energy in like electric car batteries because they tend to be in the neighborhood of let's say 50 to 100 kilowatt hours. Some larger vehicles like the F-150 Lightning and the Rivian R1T, let alone the Hummer EV, are well above 100, sometimes even 200 kilowatt hours. So large batteries going on in EVs. And just for context here, I hope I made sense with what a watt is. It's just a unit of energy. Um, just for some numbers, just so you understand how massive the batteries in electric cars are, my phone will draw maybe like 10 watts, somewhere in that neighborhood. A laptop will draw maybe closer to 80 watts, like a high-end kind of laptop I might use to edit a video like this. Um, you know, that might seem like a lot of energy, but 10 watts, let's think about that. We have to multiply that by 100, uh, yeah, to get the load for a kilowatt. That's just one kilowatt. For a motor, like I said, which could easily output 30, or let's say more kilowatts, but let's stick with our example of 30, um, in an electric car, well, we have 30 times 100, that's what, like 3,000. So 3,000 times the energy your phone draws just to keep your electric car going down the road. And that should give you also an idea with watt hours and kilowatt hours, how darn big electric car batteries are. This is also part of why electric cars right now are so expensive. But this video is not about the cost of electric cars, we're talking about efficiency. So. Let's get back to where we started. MPGE, what does it mean? Well, they take the gallon content of gasoline, the EPA does, and they normalize it to 33, I believe, yeah, 33.7, I'll put this in text if I'm incorrect here, but somewhere in the neighborhood of 33.7 kilowatt hours um, for one gallon of gasoline. Now that, when I read that, shocked me because I know the battery content of a lot of cars, like I just told you, it's 50 to 100 kilowatt hours for most passenger cars. My Polestar 2 has a usable battery capacity of 75 kilowatt hours, which gives me realistically around 200 miles of highway driving range comfortably. Uh, that's incredible because if you think about 75 kilowatt hours, right, let's divide that by 33.7, what the EPA tells us is the content of a gallon of gasoline. My car has like just over two gallons of gas in its tank so to speak, in its batteries of energy capacity. And yet it's so darn efficient that it's able to travel, you know, not as far as a lot of gas cars, but still comfortably over 200 miles at like 
comfortably over 70 miles an hour highway speed. That is so incredible. And other cars still are more efficient. Like the Tesla Model 3 is built to be incredibly efficient. Um, and you know, the Hyundai Ioniq 5, a lot of these vehicles are really efficient. My Polestar is one, at, one of the less efficient electric vehicles, believe it or not. So electric motors and vehicles, TLDR are just really darn efficient. But back to MPGE, it's very simple math. So if we take basically 33.7 kilowatts, we can measure the consumption of the car, sorry, 33.7 kilowatt hours, because it's the stored capacity. Um, 33.7 kilowatt hours, we just take basically how much has been consumed, how many miles you get from that, and then we convert that to the MPGE figure. So all we're doing is converting gal gallons to kilowatt hours, just different ways of measuring energy, gallons specifically of gasoline. Um, so depending on the kind of gasoline you have, like premium or e let alone E85, super fancy types of fuel, of course that's different. Uh, but generally just know that gasoline is really darn energy dense. And that's why it's been such a challenge for electric vehicles throughout human history to really be practical up until now where we're starting to make it work. Uh, but MPGE, that's all it is. So for context, most electric vehicles, I think this one's like in the neighborhood of 90 something MPGE, a Model 3 is comfortably over 100 MPGE. It tends to be a pretty comparable metric for gas cars. What I find ridiculous is the Hummer EV, that really large electric truck, uh, is 53, 57 MPGE. Terrible, right? It's like half a Model 3. Well, when you think about it, for the size of that vehicle, that's a testament to just how efficient electric cars are because again, right, 50 MPGE, broadly comparable to gas cars. What kind of gas car get 50 MPG? A Prius. So a Hummer EV is as efficient as a Prius. Isn't that insane? This is also why, by the way, if you're an EV advocate or looking to get an EV and you, you come across someone who's like, well, you know, if our energy is generated with coal, which is granted it is in a lot of states still, aren't we just no better off than gas because coal is dirty? Well, yes, and I'm not an environmental advocate here. I'm not trying to and plant politics, but just the science of the electric motor will tell you that no matter how you're making the energy, and granted, I do think our grid needs to get cleaner. That's something in the US and globally we all should work towards nuclear, solar, however we do it. But even if we are generating energy the dirty way, the electric motor is so much more efficient than a gasoline drivetrain that I think overall we're looking at a net positive. A lot of studies seem to confirm that out. So if you want a good talking point for you know, the person you might come across in your life who tries to give you that coal argument, well, feel free to give them that. Electric cars are just stupidly efficient. But let's get into more kinds of ways to measure efficiency because you've seen MPGE probably if you've been shopping electric cars, you're definitely familiar with MPG. We've done the conversion there, right? One gallon of gas being 33.7 kilowatt hours. It's just converting those types of uh, energy. Well, there's another way to measure it several different ways. The way that we like it out of spec is miles a kilowatt hour, and it's fairly self-explanatory. Just like we measure miles per gallon, miles per kilowatt hour is just instead of saying 33.7 kilowatt hours or a gallon of gas, uh, we're saying one kilowatt hour. The reason we use one kilowatt hour is because it's fairly easy to actually calculate range in any electric car. As long as you know the kilowatt hour capacity of that electric car's battery, just multiply your miles a kilowatt hour consumption by the battery size and you'll get your range. For instance, in my Polestar, if I were to say get two and a half miles a kilowatt hour, and I know I have a 75 kilowatt hour battery, then I could do the math to see that I'd be getting somewhere around 170, 180 miles of range, right? 2.5 times 75. Um, so you could do that math fairly easy for any electric vehicle, assuming you know its battery capacity and um, your miles a kilowatt hour for any given situation. Generally, electric vehicles, interestingly, will consume more energy at highway speed than at city speed. This is an inverse relationship to gas vehicles, which normally, right, have a higher city MPG than highway MPG. Um, or sorry, vice versa. Most gas cars, most combustion vehicles have higher highway miles per gallon efficiency than they do in the city. That's because of, well, it's complicated, but basically it has to do with transmissions, right? Uh, gas cars tend to be most efficient generally around 40 to 60 miles an hour, much faster than that, aerodynamic drag kicks in and they're less efficient, slower than that because of the drivetrain losses and gearing 
they're less efficient. Most electric vehicles are single speed. So that makes it so super easy. The faster you go, basically, the more drag you have, um, the more energy you're consuming. So in the city, driving at low speeds in town, electric cars are at their most efficient. So if you've ever looked at the EPA website or a manufacturer's website and seen MPGE is higher in the city than it is on the highway for electric cars and been like, huh, that's weird. That's the inverse of what I'm used to seeing. Well, that's why. Uh, but anyways, back to miles a kilowatt hour. I love it as a metric, very universal. I wish more vehicle manufacturers used it. Teslas, you know, you might have heard of them, make a lot of electric vehicles. They use, I believe, watt hours a mile, uh, which is just another measure of consumption. And so instead of miles a kilowatt hour, they're taking for one mile how many watt hours you consumed. A watt hour, just to remind you, is one one thousandth of a kilowatt hour. Uh, and then my uh, Polestar, same as Volvo, because those companies are heavily related, um, uses a more European metric, which is in Europe, they call it, I believe, kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. But in the United States, we do kilowatt hours per 100 miles. So they're different numbers. They're going to be different, but they translate them. So for me, my car will tell me, for instance, I have 33 kilowatt hours of energy consumed per 100 miles of driving. I don't like this metric because it's just weird. No, not many other people use it. In Europe, maybe it's more common, but in the US, if you want an easy way of converting that to our preferred metric for measuring electric car efficiency, miles a kilowatt hour, all you've got to do is divide 100 by that figure that your Volvo or your Polestar or your other Euro vehicle is giving you. So, so let's say I had 33.3 uh, kilowatt hours per 100 miles. I would divide 100 by 33.3 and I'm sitting right about at 3 miles a kilowatt hour, which is decent efficiency. That's just an example. So that's a just easy way to quickly convert that math. And those are in short, four different ways to express measuring electric car efficiency. MPGE, which is just an analog to miles per gallon that we use with an energy conversion from a gallon of gasoline. Then we have watt hours a mile, which Tesla uses, and I think maybe some other cars, mainly just Tesla. Then we can just convert that um, if we step it up a few units to kilowatt hours for 100 miles or 100 kilometers, depending on your car market. Um, those numbers will obviously be different because 100 kilometers and 100 miles are very different distances, but 100 is a nice clean round number, so we use that. Uh, and then lastly, I think that's it actually. Yeah, so watt hours, oh, sorry, miles a kilowatt hour, the one we like to use, which I think like the Hyundai and the Kia and Genesis vehicles use, and um, I think GM maybe, I don't know. A lot of electric cars use that, and frankly, I think miles a kilowatt hour is the most universally transferable one because we can just really easily do math in our heads to find the driving range uh, if we know the consumption of a car. So I like that as a metric. Hopefully this video wasn't too nerdy, not too much math. I just wanted to kind of quickly film this as I was you know, just doing my normal in-town commute, driving in my very efficient electric car. Um, efficient, absolutely, uh, not relatively. Again, a Model 3 is more efficient than my Polestar 2. However, because of electric motors, I can tell you my Polestar 2 is a lot more darn efficient than like, let's say, a comparable vehicle like a Volvo S60 with a four-cylinder gas engine. Even though that's not the most inefficient vehicle on the planet, electric motors are still more efficient. Nonetheless, we should know how to look at how efficient they are so we can cross-compare them and say, for instance, oh, Model 3 is more efficient than a Polestar 2 or an Ionic 5 is more efficient than a Mustang Mach-E. These are useful things to know. So if you're shopping, if you're just understanding electric vehicles, I think knowing consumption is just important. Just because you drive an electric vehicle doesn't mean it's as efficient as it could be. And we should all be pushing manufacturers, I think generally, to make more efficient cars. So I like knowing these numbers. Hopefully you like knowing these numbers. And I've been Max. I'll see you in the next out of spec guide video.